It's really exciting because a lot of the time you get these flies and maybe there's some bent hairs on the back that are supposed to be straight. One of those proteins that's on that piece of DNA is causing this effect, or maybe something else is causing that effect, but like now there's something different. I know something's going on and there's something to investigate. My main interest is in developmental biology and how things become what they're going to be. Well, I'm looking at fly development and we specifically want to know how one part of the body becomes what it becomes and how it is different from the other parts of the body. Of course, as a human, one of my main interests is in human biology and one question is how can we use flies to study human biology? But the beauty is that a lot of the proteins that are found in humans are also found in flies. I like the fact that I can study the fly biology, but I can also apply that to study many other systems because those proteins are going to be used from everything from yeast all the way up to humans. For many of our experiments, we're looking at embryonic development. Embryogenesis for the fly takes 24 hours. We have a bunch of flies in a cage and we put an apple juice plate in the cage because the flies like to lay their eggs in fruit and then they'll collect the embryos that are on that plate and they shear it in this machine called a sonicator that uses high-pitched sound to break up the DNA. One thing that's really nice is that in order for us to send the DNA for sequencing, it doesn't really have to go that far because we actually have a sequence machine down the hall. What you need to do is figure out what does this piece of DNA represent and find out where does each one of these pieces of DNA belong relative to the chromosome. Flies are an excellent model system and they've been studied for many years. One of the main reasons is because they have extra copies of DNA in some cells and in that way their chromosomes become very large and you can actually see the chromosomes in the light microscope. My work starts at the very bottom with the molecules. Ideally, I would like to connect it to that whole schematic. And then on top of that, how do each one of those steps feed back towards the molecules? Systems biology is trying to look at the whole organism, looking at the physiology, looking at the morphology, and then looking at the molecular biology and integrating all those things together. I'm Rebecca Spicconi, and I study metamorphosis in flies.